it's here. It's finally here after us looking online for a year and a half at prototypes, CAD designs, rumors, speculation. Beagle's first entry into the transformable toy collector's market has arrived. This is from the classic animated series, Genesis Climber Mos Speta. This is Stick Bernard. For you Robotech fans, yes, this is indeed what we know as a cyclone, and this is Scott Bernard. Um, this particular piece is being distributed both in Japan and will soon be in the States under the Robotech banner. Um, Beagle basically has the Japanese release and this particular head sculpt. The company Toynami, who recently brought us the totally awesome Beta Fighter, uh, is going to be distributing this in the States as a cyclone under their masterpiece collection. Uh, so. The Japanese version is running about $250 to $300 after shipping, depending on where you look. It's a pricey piece. The I believe the domestic version, if you go through the Toynami, will end up being about $200 before shipping. But uh, it's beautiful. So as you can see, the box is enormous, uh, very similar to a Yamato package. Rumors are the folks who designed the packaging also design Yamato's packaging. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, the box and the manual and all of that certainly felt like a Yamato package. So, of course, you get a sticker sheet, which I've already liberally applied to mine. You get a manual. And the manual, for those of you who don't read Japanese, this is a complex transformation. This is a, probably one of the clearest, easiest to make out manuals I've seen in quite some time. So, even though you don't read Japanese, you should have no problem if you follow the photos carefully doing the transformation without fear of breaking anything. So in the box you of course get the beam cannon, you get a Gallant rifle, you get a Gallant pistol, you get the helmeted head, and the visor does close, and you get the non-helmeted head. This is the uh, exclusive to the Beagle version. Toynami's version will have a different head sculpt. I, I personally like the photos I had seen of this version more, which is part of the reason why I ended up going with the Japanese version. HBT fuel cells. This does come apart and these canisters do come out of the carrier. Uh, Robotech fans know that as protoculture canisters. Uh, they include an attachment to attach the beam rifle to the bike on the front cowling. They also give you spare hands. Now I have the hand that's designed to grip the beam cannon. That's the standard fist. You also get a right-handed uh, right fist another hand to hold the Gallant hardware and of course you're supposed to have a right and a left hand to kind of open holding the and this is also the hand you would use for the handlebars now I don't know if this is going to show on video but what I have there are two left hands I mean right hands I have no left hand they gave me two right hands um, for $250 to $300, there should be no ifs, ands, or buts about getting a duplicate hand. So I'm a little disappointed by that. Uh, this came courtesy of Angles. So, you know, some have called this a doll, and it's not quite a doll to be fair. It really is a nice solid action figure underneath what is a cloth limbs covering hard jointed figure. Allow me to zoom out there for you. Yep, everything's on there now. Let's back in so you can get a, bit, a little better. So, very much, you ever uh, pick up a St. Cloth Myth? Very similar articulation. Um, much tighter joints. I'm sure you can hear that on camera. That's nice and clicky. Arms don't click, but the legs do. Joints are tight, um, sometimes a little too much so. Limbs rotate in the appropriate places, full ball, ball socket hands. Uh, you know, neck swivels forward and back, allowing you to really get the head out there. And, um, some have reported loose visors, mine is fine. And of course, but, oh no, he lost his head. A little bit of head swapping, so. I very much like it. Um, 
when you get yours out of the package, you may find the cod piece is kind of dislodged. It is sort of just a plastic clip that holds it in place. But once you get it where it's supposed to be, it does sit. Uh, really like the figure, except for one glaring point. Again, for the $250, $300 you're going to pay to import this to the States, there is no excuse for a big, giant, gaping screw hole in the neck. That's just ridiculous. Um, feet fully articulated and if you kind of open up you can kind of see a joint mechanism die cast metal in there it looks like so nice and tight very nicely done and now for the bike uh, this is real rubber tires Yeah, working shock absorbers. Um, the detail in the radiator, I don't know if that'll show on video or not, I apologize. It's my first time with the HD camera, so I'm not as innately familiar with the equipment, but bear with me, we're working our way through it. Yeah, that may not show, but there are, you can actually see the vents painted in not only painted in, but raised detail, just exquisite. Um, die cast content, not a whole lot here, just the bar here, the kickstand. Uh, there's part of the frame in here is die cast metal. Uh, again, the support bar here on the other side, die cast metal. So everywhere it really is going to rely on structure, for structural integrity, it, and it needs to be die cast, it is. The rest is ABS and PVC, apparently. I would have guessed some of this was palm, but it doesn't list palm on the box. Yes, there are kickstands. So that's just sweet. I prepped them for battle. Doesn't matter what order you do that. So here we go. All right, first thing I want to do is loosen these bad boys up. And this is all a hinge. Just want to get those out of the way. I'm just gonna. Seems like a very very sturdy uh, ABS. I would have guessed palm, but like I said, there's nowhere mentioned. Kickstand. All right. Now we're gonna disconnect the front housing, and from here it's gonna seem a bit floppy at points. It really is kind of a controlled chaos. And oh, let me get back on camera. Basically, push that in, it rotates, and then it goes in all the way. This is sort of clipped in here, and it is just going to break free. Now, here's a tip for you when you're transforming it back, you're going to be like, How the hell did I get that in there? This does push down and that locks it sort of in place there. Um, don't forget you have this kickstand and what there is here is, allow me to, very well made. <laughs> it really is, I gotta say it's very tight. Um, in, not in a bad way, in a good way. Um, if you can see there, there is a nub. So when you go to put it back in bike mode, you wanna make sure that nub is lined up because it will clip in there. So be mindful of that. It does look a little bit like if you set it in the wrong spot, you could do some harm. So I'm gonna bring that down forward. And voila. So at this point, we're gonna disconnect the housing down here. And this is still sort of moving freely on the joint, so you're just going to kind of release the tension by pushing forward a little bit. But let me get the kickstand out of the way. There we go. Get back. So basically, that just kind of comes loose. Maybe bring these in a little tighter. These, you just kind of, the side cowlings really kind of come in last. You just kind of want to keep them to your side and out of the way. Um, be mindful they're there and they shouldn't do no any harm there.
All right, before we proceed, the other side of the fuselage, well, let me get back on camera. That slides out there. And now suddenly that kind of frees things up, so you're going to be mindful of that. Also up here in the front, the radiator, this is double hinged. Ooh. See that? That comes down. You're going to want to take the radiator and flip it in. Uh, I know Yako's blog, for those of you that, been f that follow this sort of thing, talked about this screw possibly rubbing up against the crotch. Honestly, I don't think it really physically connects there to cause a problem. But he suggested putting a piece of tape there if you were worried about such things. So that's going to kind of sit up there now. I believe we've got all that where we need it to be. So now we're going to start freeing up this over here. So I'm going to loosen that. Yeah. Yeah, and this isn't necessarily the order they show it in, but I have found that to be the easiest thing to do. I'm going to kind of free that up. And the housing here is just kind of clipped on. So at that point, you know, things are loose. Remember, you've got little clips here. So be mindful of those. Again, I realize it looks kind of fiddly, but again, it is the nature of the design. So, y'all asked for a perfect transformation. You got it. I don't want to hear any crying. You want a toy? Go buy the Sneal, the uh, Mega House version. This is for big boys. Okay, so from here, you just kind of want to make it a point. See, basically, this whole mechanism here kind of rotates this way. So you can start moving that that way. You want to take the, this point you're going to address bringing these to the front because that's where they're going to sit on the legs. I'm sure those of you who follow the series are beginning to see things take shape. That's going to sit on his crotch. At this point, again, the little arm collings kind of sit there. You know, I just let them sit. So from here, it kind of becomes a bit of a Rubik's Cube. You're going to this is going to sort of be the last thing to deal with, but I don't know if this is going to show here. But I'll try and do this so you can see it on camera. The whole engine kind of collapses in on itself. It's on a rotating mechanism, and then you're going to rebring the fuel tank over. But before you do that, you got to bring the housing down. That's on its own sort of pivot. You probably end up bringing that back up and out of the way, but camera I apologize now at this point you've got the white clips here I inadvertently usually will find myself knocking one out. so they do they do appear to be designed to pop off should that happen basically that should just kind of slide over and voila it begins to take form so at this point we're going to address Part that everybody's been wondering about, I am sure. I know this was the part I was most curious about. Yes, there is a real working mechanism, and this is probably the most finicky part of it. Not that it's complicated, but it's just, you know, jointed. Although I will say it's nice, you know, holds the poses really well, and this attaches to the forearm. So the theory being that once the rider is in the armor, uh, apologize, once the rider is in the armor, these attach to hard points on the boots, which form the bottom part of the mecha, or, you know, power amplification. These power the forearm, so they're wearing a suit that completely motorizes all of their function, and it works logically in the real world that way. So, let's get on with it. So, at this point, we're pretty much going to, well, let me get around so you can see that the handlebars do swing up. And this is pretty much where that's going to sit ultimately once the rider is in there. It's just going to kind of sit parallel behind his shoulder and this will move behind his arm as sort of a skeleton of his motion. So there you go. I'm going to bring those out and get that sort of ready. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to flip the handlebar up. These do pull out. Now there's a little sort of bracket there. Basically you're going to line that up. That's going to come out. I'm going to bring that up. 
So it lines up with the housing. I just rotate that back. Oop. And voila. It's poseable too. Do the same with this side. Pull. Yeah, let me. I apologize again. It is my first time working with this particular setup. So I apologize. I'm trying to get this to you as quickly as I could. And uh, Josh was nice enough to lend me the HD camera for a couple of days so I could do a thorough and pleasant review. And basically the headlights just rotate in. Ooh. Voila. So at this point, we're pretty close to done. I'm going to bring this around. You could have done this you know, before this. The, you know, once you handle it for a little bit, you'll feel when you can do things. You don't have to necessarily follow every little step that they provide. So that rotates. And this does collapse too. So basically, when it's tight, so you're going to have to push. And it goes right in. And just kind of sits in there. At this point, things start locking together. And we're ready to kind of put our rider in. Okay, I just kind of tweak some of the limbs, so hopefully it'll be a little prettier on camera. So basically the chest housing goes up, this die cast metal bracket, and you're going to want to push up there. Now, there's really no getting around this. You really can't leave the helmet on the rider and expect his head to clear. So, sadly, Scott loses his head, then you're good to put him in the bike mode. I know, I know, there are screams of otaku everywhere right now, just wailing. Seriously, of all the things they've done right, I can overlook them. So at this point, pretty much kind of lining them up, and there are three points on his body you need to be aware of. There's the main clip is going to go up in here. Oh, P.S. side note. So this little rectangle here, be mindful. Sometimes you have to give a little force to get him out of the bike. He really locks in there. Uh, this part on mine sometimes pops up, so be mindful. You don't want to lose it. Um, there's just a little screw hole back there, so if uh, suddenly you notice it's missing, check the floor. So, but basically, in the bike, we've got a, as I try to hold that there, there's a clip here, and then there are two little clips right here. Very, very small. ABS. I would have guessed palm. They're like super strong, and they have to take some... Uh, they hold some tension. Also, make a mental note, if this is your first time transforming it and using this as a guide, thank you. Um, the clip is kind of going up and then in. So remember that, you're gonna need to know that. When you take them out, you wanna know which direction to kind of yank, it's this way. So in the directions, they say the top one first, then the bottom tabs. So this kind of becomes a trick, and you want to make sure, again, that this lower cod piece is completely straightened out. At that point, basically, that's what's going to happen. You want to hold that. There we go. He's in. You, you'll feel it. He just, he's in there tight. He ain't going anywhere. So I'm going to get his arms out of the way a little bit, and at this point, he's in there nice and secure. You might want to line up his cod piece a little bit. You may have to readjust some stuff. Oops. I'm trying to stay on camera there. At this point, you can begin to lower this stuff down. Before you lock that in, you're going to want to, you know, line up his hips. And now, in here, this is a very nice touch. There are these plastic runners that slide out. Little pegs attached to the boots just like the design. So there you go. Hard point. Oh, before I do that, you may want to put the uh, foot pegs away. Oops, I knew I was forgetting something. Voila. Oh, and while we're in here, go ahead and push those back in. Going to line that back up. And that is a ball socket in there, so it moves, and when you pose it, it'll hold the pose nicely. And 
see I line that up again everything's on there nice and tight just slide in the run around again ball socket so so at least you guys get a nice good look at this in HD. Sorry, just trying to line that up. There we go. Go on, get it. There you go. The, you may also want to pull the legs down. At this point, you know, make sure that the that column you had slid out, you push back in. Bring that all the way down. Oh, hang on, make sure the neck clears. Then bring that all the way down. At this point, there is a clip where you first disconnected it. It now attaches to the crotch. And here's the big part. Now, to be fair, the tire will kind of get in the way here. So you may have to sort of roll that in like so. But before you do that, make sure to lower that and it should, for the most part, make it by. Make sure the handlebar gets past that. We'll straighten that out in a moment. Just want to get this other side in. this point you just want to make sure nothing's like jammed here's the tip if your housing won't sit tight make sure this is kind of bowed out so before we lock everything down this whole thing's on a rotating mechanism and the holes only plug in one way see that's backwards so I'm going to rotate this the other way and it kind of stacks up on itself and the piston goes behind his arm and that plugs in voila powered piston gauntlets. That's awesome. And it doesn't feel fragile. They've used a nice, uh, it feels like a PVC here where it needs to be soft. Like they've really thought it through. Die cast where it needs to be die cast. They, they've done an amazing job engineering this. You know, it's just, it's quite impressive. It really is when you handle it. Um, and believe me, when we're all done, what you're left with is just a nice, tight, solid, beautiful display piece. So at this point, you're lining up the peg hole. Thing should want to make sure that slides down, that tightens in, and then things should just kind of line up. Same thing on this side. Sometimes, like I said, this will pinch. See, that just kind of pinched in there. You want to kind of make sure it gets behind the tire. And then get the cowling lined up and push and everything sits nicely. Get your helmet on. And to be fair, that screw hole is completely not noticeable. Alright, just wanted to readjust the camera there. So at this point, you've got a pretty much a completed rider, except you've got to pull out the thrust intakes. And yeah, sorry guys, as tight as this is, and these joints really are, you know, just very, very nice, you may be able to get it to stand up and hold a pose, but it will be precarious. You really want to get them posed, you're going to need some sort of support, I'm sorry to say, but uh, you're going to be picking this thing up all the time and playing with it. It's just fantastic. It just, it's awesome. So something else to note, and I'm, I don't normally store it in here anymore because it's just a pain in the butt to get out, but there is a target scope in here. And unfortunately, we all thought this was going to flip out and then you closed it and it sat there. No, it just stores in there. It is just a piece you plug in. But it does look nice, I, so I tend to just keep this in the display base. But before we're done, uh, you want to grab the tire here. I've noticed this mechanism does seem to kind of push in and tighten up a little bit. You're going to want to get the thrusters out. They're in there real tight. 
so be prepared to use a fingernail or there and voila we're just going to get the fins out so I, as you can you know you watch me transform it that either sold you or it didn't um, i can tell you that the finished result in both bike and armor mode ah there you go are both very very nice and very tight and see the kickstand just kind of stores right there so it's very very nice um, you would think that the uh, mechanism would be very stiff it's not it's actually quite fluid of course I'm just manhandling it right now so It's tight and fluid, it, it's nice, they did a nice job. So let me grab the stand. And this is what I was talking about. Basically, I'm gonna take this off. And this housing back here, you just kinda, and this is very difficult to line up, but once you get it lined up, you're good. Now this is what I was talking about. This whole thing, you're gonna wanna use this. It looks nice, it helps support it, it's very solid, but, uh, Basically, if you want to get an action pose, that just sl clips on. This is adjustable here, but you have to take it out. It's like in a socket, and that holds it in place. You can, I don't know if this was intended design or not, but you can use it as a support. Without having to use the entire base. However, you are going to want to set it up flying occasionally. And so you can do that. This goes here. That locks in. There is a peg hole here. So you can put that there. So everything looks nice and tight. And this can store right there. I tend to just kind of fold that down. Two little round pegs. A couple different varying degrees, but if you want them flying, you can do that. Of course, you'll have to go in here and adjust. But that's nice. If that doesn't sell you, I don't know what does. So there you go, boys and girls. I love it. Um, price is incredibly high, but it is very, very nice. If you're a fan of the design, you're, you know, Robotech fan, you've always wanted a nice Cyclone piece. It's a bit display, a bit collector, but it's a whole lot of toy at the same time, too. So don't let others fool you just because the transformation's complex. Doesn't mean it's not fun to handle, uh, especially after the fact. So there you go, guys. In a nutshell. Beagle's first entry into the transformable market, the stick type Mos Spada. Again, thanks to Angles for getting this out to me. I love it. This is honestly best piece I've gotten in years. I'm quite satisfied. I'm a huge fan, and I look forward to getting more characters from the series. So thanks for playing along. Thanks for putting up with me. Have a good one. Till next time, I'm Adam.